Welcome to week four of Cardiac Interventional. And so this week we're going to be talking about the coronary arteries, so we're going to get right at it. The coronary arteries are the first branches off the aorta. So as you can see here, um, here's the left ventricle. The left ventricle pumps blood into the aorta. And the very first branches off the aorta are the coronary arteries. The coronary arteries are what supply the heart muscle with blood. And this is just kind of an interesting fun fact. The coronary arteries fill during diastole when the heart is at rest. Most arteries fill during systole when the uh, ventricle is squeezing, but the coronary arteries fill on diastole. The right coronary artery originates from the right coronary cusp of the aortic valve, so here. It travels along the right AV groove, uh, within the right atrial ventricular groove. So you can see it traveling along here and it um, travels to the back of the heart, uh, to the crux. And the crux is where the interventricular slash interatrial septum meet with the AV groove. So if you can just kind of imagine a, a cross, an imaginary cross in the back where the two grooves kind of come together, um, that's where the right uh, coronary artery uh, goes to. There are several important uh, branches off the right coronary artery, um, but the two most important are the PDA and PLA. And for every diagram that you see, you're going to get a different representation of these arteries. But the PDA is this one here that is um, angling kind of down. And on this diagram, they actually are labeling it the posterior interventricular artery, but that is, um, which is correct, but the, the other name for it that we are more um, familiar with is the PDA, the posterior descending artery, and so it is here. And then the PLA on this diagram is not, is not on here. So I'll show it to you on a different diagram. 85% of the population is right dominant, meaning that the PDA and PLA come off the right coronary artery. So mo most people's anatomy is, is like this. The right coronary courses around to the back of the heart and then um, has this branch, the PDA, and then also another branch, the PLA. The left coronary artery comes from the left coronary cusp of the aortic valve. It has a small segment, which is the left main segment, and then it uh, bifurcates into the LAD, left anterior descending, and the circumflex. Sometimes there's an intermediate branch uh, between them, and then it is termed, then it is called the intermediate branch. Um, the LAD um, goes down the interventricular groove. The circumflex uh, travels along the AV groove to the back of the heart, kind of to meet up with the with the right coronary artery. So the right coronary artery shoots off to the right, the circumflex artery shoots off to the left, and then they both travel to the back of the heart and kind of meet up back here posteriorly. Um, the 8% uh, of the population is left dominant, meaning that that PDA and or PLA are coming off the circumflex. So most people are right dominant, uh, some are left dominant, and then there's 7% of the population that are considered co-dominant. Okay, we need to talk about the angiography now, and first we're just going to talk about uh, the, uh, the names of the, of the views. And so when the doctor <clears throat> wants the AP position, the II, the image intensifier, is directly over the patient. If the doctor wants an RAO position, the II is on the right side of the patient. If the doctor wants an LAO, the II is on the left side of the patient. Cranial, the II is tilted towards the head, and caudal, the II is tilted towards the feet. As a, uh, just a rule, uh, cranial views are best for the LAD artery, and caudal views are best for the circumflex artery. <clears throat> we'll talk about the four corners or the four most commonly viewed views of the left coronary artery. So the LAO cranial is mostly for the LAD. The LAO caudal, also called the spider view, <clears throat> is good for the left main bifurcation. 
the RAO caudal is good for the circumflex and the RAO cranial is good for the R for the LAD. A shallow RAO is good for the left main. And then for the right coronary artery, you do an LAO, which makes the uh, right coronary artery look like the letter C, and then an RAO makes the right coronary artery look like the letter L. So we're going to look at these now. So here is again that image um, showing a good visual visualization of the right coronary artery coming off the right uh, cusp, the left coronary coming off the left cusp. And again, um, drawings uh, and x-rays, of course, don't look the same, so um, you just kind of have to take each image with a grain of salt because then, of course, everybody's anatomy is different also. But here we're seeing the right coronary artery, <clears throat> and it travels back behind the heart. Here's the left coronary artery. Um, it branches into the LAD, which goes down to the apex of the heart and then the circumflex artery again wraps around to the back of the heart to meet up with the right coronary artery. Um, while we're here, this is considered the base of the heart, meaning the top of the heart is the base and then the bottom of the heart is the apex. Okay, so getting into the views now, this is the LAO cranial. So look at this diagram here. We're looking at this, the LAO cranial. Okay, so for this one, don't, don't look at this. In fact, we can just mark this out for now. Okay, so we're looking here at the LAO cranial. So for, again, it's a cranial. So because it's a cranial, it is going to best visualize the LAD. Now this image is uh, labeled for you, so that's good. So here we've got the LAD coming straight down. Remember, the LAD is going to go all the way to the apex, so it's always going to be the longer one that goes all the way to the tip. And then we have the circumflex here, and then right here is the left main. So if you will look closely at the, the picture that I have, then compare it with the, the diagram here. I think this is a, a really good uh, diagram and image uh, to compare. Okay, here is another LAO cranial. So again, LAO cranial, so here's your LAD coming straight down. Here's a diagonal coming off the LAD, and then here is the circumflex. This is the left main, I don't know if they're trying to say left main trunk, I guess, I, I'm not sure, but this is the left main here we got the LAD, we got some septals coming down this way, a diagonal here, and the circumflex. Okay, so now for this picture, we are looking just at this, the LAO caudal. And so the LAO caudal, because it's caudal, it's um, best to, uh, at viewing the circumflex, but um, the LAO caudal is also considered the spider view. And what this view is good for is the bifurcation. So here, and what I mean by that is here's the, again, the main, the left main coronary, coronary artery, and then here's where it bifurcates into LAD and circumflex. So it's a good picture of the circumflex, and it's also a good picture of just the left main and its bifurcation. So again, we're looking here, so here's the, you know, the CT reconstruction of it, and then here is like a diagram um, with it all labeled. It's a pretty good diagram. And then yet here's another LAO caudal, just another, just showing you another example. Again, left main, whoops, excuse me. Um, left main here, the LAD going straight up, and then the circumflex here. The next picture we're looking at is the RAO caudal. Oops, excuse me. There we go. So we're not looking at this right now, we're looking at the RAO caudal. And so again, because it's a caudal, that's going to be best at looking at the circumflex. So here is the circumflex here going straight down. Here's your LAD out here. Um, there just happens to be also an, an OM, which is a branch um, off the circumflex. Uh, the OMs, acute, or I'm sorry, obtuse marginals, um, they're labeled by 
you know, how many there are. So this would be OM1. If there was another one, that would be OM2 and so on and so forth. But anyway, um, that's coming off the circumflex. And so if you'll compare that to the, the drawing, it's not bad. Here's just another um, RAO caudal for you to practice with. Okay, now we are to the RAO cranial. So now we're looking at this one. We're not looking at this one. So it is a cranial, so it's going to be best at viewing the LAD. So uh, here we go again. We got the left main. Things can kind of get crazy here. Things get su superimposed and overlapped a little bit. But this is the one you want to pay attention to. The, again, the long one that goes all the way down to the apex, the LAD. It is a cranial, so it's going to be best for the LAD. And then we have the circumflex here, too. Not a good picture of the circumflex in this one. And I have another picture demonstrating the RAO cranial for practice. Then we'll get into the, um, oh, there's another RAO cranial. Okay, now the right coronary artery. So for the right coronary artery, the um, straight LAO makes the uh, right coronary artery look like a C. And then here I have labeled for you, um, then it branches off into the PDA and the PLA. And so we are looking at this picture here. This is the LAO here and this, that one we're not looking at right now. Okay, and then here is the RAO. So for this one, now we're looking at the RAO. And um, this one makes the, the right coronary artery appear more like an, an L-shaped. So again, we got the right coronary artery, and then the branch that comes across at the bottom is going to be the PDA. And so you don't see the PLA too well this might be hit here, but um, you don't visualize it very well in this picture. Okay, so that is just a very brief overview of all of the most common views that are done. Like I said, you got the four corners of the left coronary artery, and then you've got basically the two pictures of the right coronary artery, and those are going to be your basic pictures. Now, of course, every uh, place you work, there's going to be additional pictures, but as far as the basics, um, that's what they are, the four pictures of the left coronary, ar coronary artery and the two pictures of the right coronary artery. And so I went very fast on this, um, so again, the, the best thing you can do is print this out and go over and over and over it, and of course when you're in the lab, um, you know, have someone help you pull up images from old cases and just you, you got to go over and over and over it thousands and thousands of times before it um, becomes secondhand to you. And um, I wish there was an easier way, but there, there just isn't. You just have to take the time to really um, study this and repetition, repetition. You just have to go over it and over and over it as far as the views, um, what they look like, the anatomy on the views, and which view shows what anatomy best. All of that information we just went over, and it's a lot of information, and it just takes a lot of practice. So good luck to you.